Today's scripture comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Now listen to the scripture. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousands generation of the, those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make lawful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, or male, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet for your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you, we empty our hearts and minds, we fill by love, grace, and word. So speak to our hearts, because we need your voice. And I pray, may the word on my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your eyes, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. If you Thank you. 
which you know is from Exodus 20 and on the Ten Commandments, my instant reaction was like, again? You know, it's been only a few months since I preached on the Ten Commandments last October. Not that I could remember what I preached on this passage, except the quotation I encountered by Ronald Reagan. He said, quote, I have wondered at times what the Ten Commandments would have looked like if Moses had run them through the U.S. Congress. End quote. That could be quite interesting, right? So, rather than zooming in and getting into the details of this text, let's zoom out and look at what's really happening in today's text. Meaning, why is God giving, making a covenant with Israel? You know, last two weeks, we've been looking at how God made a covenant with Noah and Abraham. Now, God is giving his commandments to former slaves in Egypt. Why then is God giving the law to Israel? Like, at the red light, you should stop. Or at the you know, stop sign, you gotta stop and wait for at least how many seconds? Three seconds. Right? Although people count three seconds at the stoplight very differently, right? Whether it's our traffic light or stop sign, the reason why it's there is not to punish us, but to protect us. The point of Ten Commandments, therefore, is a relationship. God wants to protect Israel, keep them safe, and deepen his intimacy with them. You know, relationships are sometimes sweet. I mean, very sweet. Like somebody said, everyone has a addic addic addiction, and mine happens to be you. Or, you know what will look really good on you? Me? I think those who said those words uh, they don't have kids yet. <laughs> and relationships are sometimes funny. Like, if you say you are cooler than me, does that make me harder than you? Or complicated and even challenging. Like, don't text me while I'm in the middle of texting you. Now I have to change the whole text. Alright. Then why then? Why then is God seeking relationship with us? I think it's because God is showing us what we desire, what we long for deep in our hearts if we are created in His own image. That is, what? Relationship. So the first point I want to share with you today is this. We find meaning in relationships. We human beings find meaning and purpose in relationships. Commenting on the opening word, verse 2, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Therese Pretheim, Professor Emeritus of Old Testament at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, says, quote, It keeps the commandments personally oriented. I am the Lord, your, singular, your God. Obedience to the commandments is relationally conceived. These are words given to you by <clears throat> your God. The, Lord, the, the law is a gift of a God who has redeemed you. End quote. In other words, who God is and what God has done for Israel establish a relationship. 
You know, we tend to see verse 2, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, as a preamble. Like the what we have in our constitution, you know, that begins with, you know, with we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union and it goes on. And we assume <clears throat> Catholics and Protestants alike that the Ten Commandments begins with verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment. If we, if we have you know, Ten Commandments in your house. But in Judaism, <clears throat> that's not the case. The first commandment for Jewish people <clears throat> is verse 2. Because it shows not only who God is, but also Israel's relationship with God. I am your God and you are my people. In other words, at the beginning of and at the heart of the Ten Commandments is relationship. Because only in relationship we find purpose. Only in relationship we find meaning. That's why Martin Buber, <clears throat> Austrian, Jewish, and Israeli philosopher, in his famous book, I and Thou, distinguishes two kinds of relationships. There are two ways we address existence according to Bloomer. First is I and it, an object that can be used by me like money, house, clothes, including what? People. Because I and it refers to the word of existence and sensation. On the contrary, the second way, I and thou, not I and it, refers to the word of relations, where we find bonding, purpose, and meaning. That's why Martin Burma says, quote, a human being becomes whole, not in the virtue of a relationship to himself only, but rather in virtue of a authentic relation to another human being and human beings. Thank you. You know, as I informed you and asked you our prayers last Sunday, I had my last interview with the ordination committee last Tuesday. Before the interview, I did a simulation, pretending to you know, answer you know, questions, and I found myself shaking. And I said, it's like, oh my goodness, they are not even in front of me, and I'm shaking. But thank God, I was barely shaking during the interview, and the interview went so well. And they recommended me for ordination in this October during the annual conference. Then, I thought of my first Sunday here at Grace UMC, how nervous I was and how I felt insecure, unfit for the job ignorant of American church and American culture. But the thing is, you, Grace family, you welcomed me, accepted me with open arms, open minds, and open hearts. You gave me meaning in my life and in my ministry. For that, I want to say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's true, we find meaning in relationships, particularly in responsibilities for our family and friends, but there is more. Martin Brewer says, quote, all our relationships bring us ultimately into relationship with God, who is the eternal Tao, end quote. That's why God, the eternal Tao, is giving the Ten Commandments and establishing a covenant with Israel in today's text. It's true that we humans find meaning in relationships, but the ultimate meaning and purpose can be found in God alone. 
Therefore, the second point I want to share with you is this. The ultimate, the ultimate satisfaction comes from our relationship with God, who is the eternal Tao. You know, Ten Commandments consist of two parts. First part from the, the first commandment to the fourth commandment describes our relationship with God. You know, I'm your God, first. Second, don't make idols, meaning don't make image. The third, don't use the name of God in vain. Fourth, keep the Sabbath holy. And the second part from fifth commandment to tenth commandment describes our relationship with other human beings. Fifth, honor your father and mother. Sixth, don't kill fellow humans. Seventh, don't commit adultery. Eighth, don't steal. Nine, don't bear false witnesses, basically don't lie. Tenth, don't covet. And now we say don't covet, you know, C-O-V-I-D. The more I think about the Ten Commandments, my friends, the more I realize that our relationship with others should be based on our relationship with God. You know, we keep those commandments because we are grateful for what God has done for us. Not only that, when we live for God, meaning a higher calling or something bigger than ourselves, something beyond ourselves, however you conceptualize that, we will find satisfaction there. For example, when I was writing my dissertation, going through that tedious, the difficult and exhausting process. You're walking up on a hill because the, the library was at the top of the hill. And writing 9 to 6, and I was, you know, originally I said it's like 9 to 5, and my wife heard this and said, honey, no, it was 9 to 6, nine, not 9 to 5, okay? So, you know, I was writing my dissertation 9 to 6 every day, and I did it. Not for myself, but for my family, especially my boy, Rook, at the time. And when I see him, and now my daughter, Phoebe, happy, well fed, you know, well cared for, I am happy. I am more than satisfied. I believe God wants us to experience Him such a way. Not as a tyrant asking us to do stuff or not to do stuff, but as a guiding father and loving mother who protects us and provides us. In the first half of Lent, for three weeks, we've been journeying through how God establishes His covenant with His people and how we ought to know him more. And I hope this sermon series titled, I Want to Know You More, somehow drew you closer to God, especially as we fast, as we give up more, as we pray more and read God's word more in these 40 days. For me, it began with a song Oh, I want to know you more, which my wife sang at the Ash Wednesday service and last Sunday. So let me close today's sermon and thus this sermon series by reading the lyrics from that song. I hope this kindles your desire to know him more. Now, listen. Just the time I feel that I've been caught in the mire of self. Just the time I feel my mind's been bought by worldly wealth. That's when the breeze begins to blow. I know the Spirit's call and all my worldly wanderings just melt into His love. Oh, I want to know you more. 
deep within my soul. I want to know you. Oh, I want to know you. To feel your heart and know your mind. Looking in your eyes stirs up within me cries that say, I want to know you. Oh, I want to know you more. And when my daily deeds ordinarily lose life and so on, my heart begins to bleed. Sensitivity to Him is gone. I've run the race but set my own pace and face a shattered soul. Now, the gentle arms of Jesus warm my hunger to behold. Oh, I want to know you more. Deep within my soul, I want to know you. Oh, I want to know you, to feel your heart and know your mind. Looking in your eyes, stirs up within me, Christ, they say, I want to know you. Oh, I want to know you. And I would give my final breath to know you in your death and resurrection. Oh, I want to know you more. Oh, I want to know you, to know you more. Oh, I want to know you more. My friends, I hope you know him more, get to know him more in this season and find the ultimate satisfaction in him. Amen. Let's pray. God, we are grateful for your invitation to be in relationship with you. We often feel your laws and commandments are burdensome, too heavy. But now we see in them your love and care, your desire to protect, provide, and be in communion with us. Help us to be in meaningful relationship with one another, with our family and friends, finding them and treating them not as it, but as thou, and to be in a deep relationship with you, so that we may find our ultimate thou, which is you, and the ultimate satisfaction, which is found only in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Welcome, welcome to our another virtual communion. Uh, if you don't have uh, something to eat and drink, please pause this video and prepare them, uh, bring it in front of you so that, and then, and then resume so that you can fully join this uh, communion. Now, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, This, take, eat, this is my body, which is good for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on earth gather here, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them 
be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the word the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one love, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one love. The bread between bread is our sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is our sharing in the body of, in the blood of Christ. the body of Christ from the body. The Lord Jesus Christ should be The body of Christ. Amen. Today we have a, we have active participants in this communion. So as they as my family take uh, their bread and wine, uh, feel free to take yours, meditating on Jesus' sacrifice for us. The body of Christ given for you. Phoebe Phoebe was looking and asking, why not me? <laughs> so should we get her hers uh you know, sooner than later? Alright. Let's pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>